If you are a fan of softball, you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. From softballjunk.com, we're bringing you more softball than anyone on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm Gary Leland, and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. Make sure to take a look at all my videos, all my blogs, and all of my softball information on my website at www.fastpitch.tv. Now, the Fast Pitch TV website brings you more free softball information than anyone on the planet. Now, today I'm going to bring you another episode in the history of softball. I'm working with fast pitch softball legend Dr. Dot Richardson and Allison Strange of PFX Athletics to interview a series of uh, interviews between Dot Richardson and other softball legends. You're going to be amazed at some of the softball greats that are on these ep- episodes that are joining us for these shows. Now, in this episode, of Dot Richardson interviews Michael Bastian, the former coach of the Chinese National team. Now this is the first of three interviews with Michael. Now let's go to the show right after this short message. Oops, sorry. I was reading this month's issue of the Fast Pitch Magazine. What? You're not familiar with the Fast Pitch Magazine? Watch this. You are going to love it. Looks great, right? Want to find more about the number one coaching tool on the internet? Go to fastpitchmagazine.com today. Welcome to the history of softball and legends in the games. I'm telling you, here's one of them next to me. This is Coach Michael Bastian, and Coach has coached from every level, college, professional, and even was the head softball coach for the Chinese Olympic team. And we're going to get into that in another segment. But here we are in the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Honor here in ASA in Oklahoma City. And uh, Michael, we're going to walk through the hall here a little bit and see if you see some familiar faces and stories that you would like to share. And in sharing those stories, you know, let's talk a lot about why do you think they're in the Hall of Fame? What did they do to earn being recognized like they are? Oh, Dot, that uh, brings back a lot of memories. And I guess the first person that I pick out here coming through is Michelle Granger, a left-handed power pitcher um, that just threw the ball extremely hard. And one of my first memories of her is watching her pitch for University of California in Berkeley. And I believe we were in Tucson, Arizona. And Michelle will probably kill me now, but she'll remember this. A funny story. And she's one of the best pitchers, but she was pitching, and her bra actually broke while she was pitching, and it came apart. And Now had, that's putting everything into it. That's putting everything <laughs> into it. Um, Michelle had to come off the field, go into the restroom, change, change her, uh, I guess, her athletic apparel, and get prepared. <laughs> and we laughed about that for a long time. But Michelle Granger, honestly, in my lifetime of coaching fast pitch softball, probably one of the most powerful hard-throwing left-handed pitchers that I that I ever got to see pitch. Well, what I love about that story, and as embarrassing maybe Michelle is going to feel when she hears it, is what did she do? Did she stop and cry or, you know, just felt embarrassed? No, what did she do? She ran off the field, took care of business, came back on, and I'm sure threw 70 miles an hour over and over again. Right. Well, she actually threw a few pitches with it broken, if I remember right, which was hilarious, and we were laughing because she was kind of surprised it happened and embarrassed, and then I think when the, the batter got done or the inning was over, she kind of sprinted off the field laughing, saying, you know, I need some help. But it, yeah, <laughs> it was it was classic Michelle Granger um, showing a great personality, but at the same time, she was going to get back there out there and pitch as soon as she and true Hall of Famer, right? And a true Hall of Famer, exactly. Now, I know there's someone else up here that you're just dying to talk about. Yes, um, when I look here, and man, Sheila Cornell is what I knew her from first. Likewise. And, and Sheila Cornell Dowdy. When I was a young coach and had the first opportunity to really see uh, the best softball players in the world, Sheila was 
in my opinion, the best hitter that I had ever seen in my lifetime. She could swing a, an Easton bat, if I remember correctly. And sponsored by Easton, yeah. Sponsored by Easton, yes. And, and Sheila was just what I would call just a consummate hitter. She, uh, she knew how to hit. Her pitch selection was outstanding. She was aggressive. She was explosive. And uh, that's definitely a reason why I think she's here in the Hall of Fame. And with Ace, I call her, Ace at first base, you know, with Sheila. Uh, I'll never forget her. She brought the T everywhere she went, literally. I think she... Went to bed with the T. Yeah, um, I, I remember, you know, you throwing the ball to Sheila Watcher and you guys play defense together, play softball together. And now that you bring that up, I think I do remember her. She just loved hitting balls off the T. And that's, a, that's an outstanding way to develop your skills. And now we call it contact points. But I'm telling you, Sheila would do that. I mean, it didn't matter. She'd put the inside, down the middle, outside, work it. So let's keep walking. Okay. Okay, who do we see? I mean, they're all over here. Uh, I know you know some familiar faces on this wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, one of the, the ones I smile the, the most about maybe is looking at you, uh, Dr. Dot Richardson, or as I still call you today, Dorothy, that I learned that along. Dorothy, time. oh my gosh, you are going back home. Going back home. Um, wow, some great memories of you and uh, watching you play. Always what I remembered about watching you play and you still live today is your energy and your excitement and the passion that you brought to the game. And honestly, I always would try to find myself getting closer or around you so I could grab some of that energy and get off of that, get strength up from that energy and, and grow my energy by watching you. And uh, definitely a Hall of Famer. Hey, loved every minute. We didn't plan this. I just happened to be up there. Why would they put like a shortstop and one of the shortest people up at the top? Um, I think that was so, maybe that's where you deserve to be, right at the top, and so you can look up and uh, help you get past that, uh, uh, let me that tell you. shorter physique. God is good. Amazing. But uh, look, Michelle Smith. Michelle Smith. Wow. You know, I, I've had a lot of experiences coaching in Asia, and one of the things, I, I've known Michelle a long time, but they always talked about Michelle's hair in Asia. And the lioness, right? What, the, the, what is it? The lioness. I, the and, lioness. And, and there were some Japanese words and some Chinese words that I didn't understand, but they would always talk about Michelle's hair. And, you know, Michelle, again, a, a strong left-handed pitcher that um, just was a consummate professional, a consummate Olympian. She had great command of all her pitches. She understood the game. She also loved to hit and bat, if I, I remember right. So she was an offensive player in her heyday. But yeah, Michelle is most definitely uh, deserving of being a Hall of Famer and a legend today. You know, I think of uh, Joan Joyce, who's in the hall right down there. Joan Joyce, considered one of the greatest. But I think of her and Lisa Fernandez and Michelle Smith, and I'm sure there are others, and I don't mean to exclude them, but they stand out as not only really good pitchers, but they also played another position. Yeah, um, that's Michelle was an outstanding athlete, and you bring up Coach Joyce. I've known Joni for a number of years. She was a professional golfer. I believe she played on the LPGA, and uh, just an outstanding athlete also, and Coach Joyce and, and Michelle, again, was just a tremendous athlete, along with being a great softball. Now, now you mentioned Michelle playing in Japan quite a bit. It's going to be fun to talk to you. In our next segment, Don't Miss It, we're going to be talking about the Asian athlete and uh, the Americans that did go over there, the culture shock, if you would, not just from another culture and living, but in training. And that's what we want to get to. But I know in closing here, a couple more people I'd love for you to talk about. Come around the side here. Okay. And you just look and see. You got Leo Brian Amico, Susie Brasney, and... Uh, here we go. This one, of course, you know pretty Where's well. Braz at? Oh, Braz? here's Braz right here, Susie. Uh, here's Susie Brasney. I was texting with Susie Brasney today. I, I love Susie Brasney. If there's a person that I feel that just lives for softball, lives for USA softball, has a passion for the game, it, it's Susie Brasney. Um, I think they call her Susie Suitcase Brasney up in <laughs> Canada at the Canadian Open, the Canada Cup. Um, they love her up there, but Susie to me is one of the legends of the game. A great, great defensive catcher. Um, I, I, I tease her about this. I never really remember her being a great hitter, but I saw her um, catch a lot. And she actually used to catch me in the home run derbies up in the Canada cup when I pitched to the home run derby and a couple times Crystal Bustos was hitting off of me and some great players and we have some great memories from the home run derbies up in Canada. Well I remember Susie as a great hitter okay I remember that okay. inducted in 2010 but uh, like you said she is uh, like me been a lifer it seems like playing from very young age and continue to play and a lot of uh, listeners don't really recognize that there was a women's major division something that I hope is reinvigorated I know the PFX Athletics is working hard to do that and some others in the country because after you graduate from college, you still have the prime of your life in the sport left. And where do you play? Well, the national team 
you try and get on the pro level. But what about, what, 650, I think, players per year graduate from college? Where do they go to continue to play? And some of them don't want to start playing softball, uh, slow pitch softball yet, you know. But Susie has been able to continue to play and give back. And I think she's forming a younger organization and working on that as well. You know? Yeah, Susie, uh, gosh, I have to say this. She is one of the people that brings the energy like, like Dot does, like you do. And she is now coaching youth softball out in Southern California. She has her own organization, and she just really does give back to the game. And she also helps support women's softball, as you were talking about. Truly a legend in the game. You know, and we can look at all of these, and it's true. I mean, think about the giving back. You have Hall of Famers, some of the greatest in the game, and they ha all are giving back in one way or another. Susie, you talked about with the younger Michelle Granger, also with a youth organization. Uh, Michelle Smith commentating. Lisa Fernandez coaching at UCLA. Uh, I see Leo Brian Amico also doing radio and commentating. And everyone giving back. Uh, here's Laura, uh, Lori Harrigan. And Harrigan, I call her, you know, Vegas, uh, being from Las Vegas, same thing, doing clinics and giving back. Lori Harrigan, um, I think I met Lori first when she was a, a pitcher for UNLV, and um, I'm from the West Coast. I'm from Sacramento, California originally, and got to spend a lot of time with Lori doing clinics, um, pitching camps, pitching instruction, and Lori was just a true warrior. Her nickname was Vegas because she uh, is from Las Vegas. She still lives in Las Vegas today. Um, she uh, a true, just true competitor and, you know, gold medalist, Team USA, and just an outstanding human being. And again, another legend, Hall of Famer. Here you got two more. I know you know Laura Berg and Lisa Fernandez. Yeah, and Stacy Newman. Oh, and Stacy, yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny. They put Stacy Newman on the bottom. As a catcher, as yeah. As a catcher. Tall, and well, tall. As tall as me, 6'2". And yeah. they put Dot Richardson at the top, and she's uh, extremely... I guess tall too, but uh, <laughs> one of the great memories I have with Stacy is I with Stacy Newman. First memory I have is we were at a national tournament. I, it was either Lodi or Stockton, California, and I had heard about this big, strong catcher. And I walk up to the field, and about 20 minutes into the game, she hit a ball about 350 feet. As, as far as maybe I'd ever seen a ball get hit in a game in my life. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I remember watching that home run. And uh, Stacy just had tremendous power. And then years later, um, getting to know her, coaching in the USA coaching pool, I would throw batting practice to her here in Oklahoma City as she was preparing for, preparing for the summer season, actually during the World Series. And we would go hit at a local field, and I would throw to her. And I'm still amazed at how hard and far she could hit the ball with power as being a female athlete and she is truly deserving as a hall of famer for the asa and the legend of the game and i tell you i as a catcher she got so low even she's so tall she got so low that uh it's just very impressive i mean her skills Stacy was an outstanding defensive catcher as, as well, had great game calling, game management skills, and she could take that six foot two inch, I believe, body and squat it down and get out of the way of the umpire. I remember teasing her one time in an international game, there was an Asian umpire behind her that was really short, and I was watching Stacy squat down and the umpire was trying to peek around her, but she found a way to get herself lower than an umpire so she can get a good strike zone for her pitcher. And I'm not sure how tall she is, but she is tall, and at my height she looks like she's six too, but um, she's a, a really good size athlete and uh, uh, a Hall of Famer, of course. One story I can tell Lisa Fernandez, um, everybody should know who Lisa Fernandez is, in my opinion, the greatest pitcher of all time and one of the greatest softball players of all time. Um, I did a lot of work with Lisa and living out in um, northern Nevada around Lake Tahoe, she contacted me one time and said she was coming out to play in the Legends Golf Tournament at Lake Tahoe and she asked me if I wanted to come up and do that with her and Mike and kind of be her caddy and um, I got to caddy for her during the, the, the big celebrity golf tournament out there and walk around the tournament and watch her play golf and uh, just an unbelievable athlete again able to pitch, hit and play golf at such a high level. She's uh, definitely a Hall of Famer and one of the best of all time. How about Laura Berg? Laura Berg, wow, Bergie. Berge is just the best defensive outfielder that, that probably I've, I've ever seen. Um, uh, the only four-time Olympian, I believe, for the, um, States, for yeah. the USA. Mm -hmm. um, she was a, a, a pain to coach against, I can tell you that. <laughs> and one of the greatest things that she brought to the game was her passion. Yeah. She was the same every day. Um, one of the first true, what I remember, true multiple threat slappers. She could bunt, slap, hit for power, and you know had a great offensive game, but just honestly the best defensive outfielder I think I've seen in my lifetime. Definitely a Hall of Famer. Now the Hall of Fame, we've talked about a lot of women in the sport, in the history of the sport, but there's a lot of men here 
for fast food softball. And when we walked into this area, you pointed out a good friend of yours up here. You got Chuck uh, Darcy, and I remember him as well. But talk about Chuck just a little bit. Oh, man, the, the memories come back when I, I think of Chuck D.R.C. Uh, he was a tremendous men's pitcher for the Guanella brothers. And I, I came from Rillinda, California, and Rillinda High School, and I played for a high school basketball coach by the name of Terry Ray, and Terry Ray was the shortstop for the Guanella brothers. And Chuck D.R.C., before I knew him from softball and coaching, he would come in and throw a basketball underhanded the length of the basketball court, spin a rise ball, all the way across the court, and when it hit my hands, it would just like spin, burn, and want to jump out of my hands. And I remember just being amazed at how much spin velocity he could get throwing that basketball. Well, I'm going to share this one story. I dated this guy, Chuck, who's on the, uh, the men's uh, Pan American team, and this was, you know, back a little while ago. But he was sought after for the pros in baseball. And they're watching him as he was pitching in high school, and a ball came back and fractured a number of bones in his hand. And so because of that, he was not drafted. And what ended up happening as he healed was asked to play fast pitch softball. So he started playing fast pitch softball, and he said he could not even touch it. Here is a guy who not only pitched but could hit in baseball amazingly, recruit, was going to be recruited to the major leagues, get into the system, and now he's finding people that said, hey, why don't you play fast pitch softball? And he could not hit these pitches. And I faced men pitchers. I mean, you guys and moving the ball and everything. He said finally by the end of the first season, he fouled one off and was pretty excited about it. But as he continued to get better in fast pitch softball and became one of the top players in the game, he said he wished that he had played fast pitch softball before he played baseball because he would have been a better baseball hitter. Um, what do you think? Do you think that has some merit to it? I, I, I played college basketball, college baseball, and um, I, one of the biggest things, that's a great question I learned, I think a lot of men in America and around the world don't realize how great of a game fast pitch softball is. And why I coached softball and chose it over baseball is because the game was faster and more exciting. And also I learned that I learned to communicate well with the female athlete, but the fast pitch game, the reaction times from the, the pitcher to home plate, making plays, a much faster game, and I really, many times in my lifetime I've had guys friends even former major leaguers get exposed to the game of fast pitch and they're like wow I had no idea how fast the game was and they always talk about the rise ball because they don't have the rise ball in major league baseball because they throw from the mound and throw downhill so it's not going to be as effective but they get really really amazed at how hard it is to hit the pitchers and the rise ball pitch well coach we are extremely honored to have you here as we walk through the hall of fame and uh What's going to be fun is the next segment. I hope you look at it. It's going to be awesome. Talking about your experience, your experience coaching in Asia. That was a, a life-changing experience for me, and I learned so much, and I'm trying to help a young lady maybe go over there now and do some pitching coach, and I just recently told her, I said, they're going to pay you to go over there and teach pitching, but I would pay them from the life skills and some of the things I learned um, from the Asian softball coaches and players, and it's so different than how we do things here in the United States of America, uh, but it's uh, something that we all can grow and learn from. So Dot Richardson and Coach Michael Bastian out for this segment. We'll see you in the next one. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure to come back and watch more episodes of Softball History. Please tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV show and this series of softball history shows. Make sure and take a look at my website. Like I said earlier, you can look at that at fastpitch.tv to keep up with all the episodes of this show. So until next time, this is your host, Gary Leland, saying goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>